Well, I did say I was going to get straight into it. Let's just clear a bit of space first. So this motherboard came to me as part of a bundle I bought from eBay. I got two computers and a big box of goodies. This was in the box of goodies. The seller told me that he has no idea if this works or not. It's an old Olivetti M203 16 MHz 286 motherboard. I thought we'd give it a go to try and power it up. If you haven't seen the video relating to all the stuff that I bought recently, I stick a card for it up in the corner. First things first though, we need to get this battery off. These are well known to leak and destroy motherboards. In this instance, there is just a very, very minor bit of corrosion down here. So I think we're just catching this in time. Let's get this battery out of the way. Clean up that area and then just test those couple of traces to make sure nothing is broken. So it would appear to be these three points here that we need to desolder. We have the desoldering station nice and warm. So easiest way to get these off, I always find add a wee bit of fresh solder first. That just helps to get the heat flowing. Perfect. And you know what? I should probably be using my uh, fume extractor that I made a few weeks ago, shouldn't I? Oh well. It's only three points. Let's do it quickly. Just give the pins a bit of a wiggle with a pair of pliers just to make sure they're free. Let's see if this battery's going to come off. And there we are. So there just is a little bit of light corrosion at this end here. The other side, perfectly fine. So I'm just going to try and deal with that quickly with a little bit of IPA on a cotton bud. Okay, that's not too bad. You can still see obviously where there is a wee bit of damage there. I could go over this with a wee bit of white vinegar just to ensure that we neutralize any of the battery acid but um, there was so little of it there that I don't really think it's necessary. And all the traces there look fine and there's nothing that looks broken. We'll maybe just test this one here that was closest to the battery terminal just to be sure but I mean visually it looks to be intact. Okay, we have the meter on continuity. Hopefully you can hear that. And I just want to try this one trace here that's closest to the battery terminal. It is quite small, very hard to follow. I think it's that one. And it seems to come down underneath these 32 pin memory sockets here. To these jumpers perhaps? Yeah. So that's fine, that trace is 100%. What about that one there, go on the other side. I can figure it out. It's gonna be quite hard to follow because it disappears underneath that chip. Yep, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with that other trace there. It seems to go to one of these memory slots here and either of those chips just impossible to follow it and I don't really want to start removing all of this as I said the corrosion here was very minimal so I'm satisfied that uh, there's no damage and just out of interest the old battery I wonder is there any life in it still holding 1.55 volts you would assume it must have been a three volt battery originally. And it's what? How old is this board? 1989? Yeah, 
well past its uh, sell by date. So the next problem we have with this board is getting power to it. This is a 10 pin connector, so not your standard AT 12 pin. Olivetti of the era like to use proprietary power connectors and even between their machines, they're proprietary, so I can't even use the power supply out of our Olivetti 386. So I need to try and figure out what all these pins do. Over here on the board, this is where your ISA riser card would go, giving you your two or three ISA slots. And on this will be all the voltages and ground, obviously. So we'll have plus five, minus five, plus 12, minus 12 on various pins down here. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to try and bail out using the multimeter. What is what? So I've been able to figure out most of this. Starting at the top, we have plus five and plus five. We then have four ground. Then it's plus 12, minus 12, minus five, and I haven't got the first clue. This pin is connected to this chip here, 74F08D. It is also connected to this one down here, 74F74D, and to this custom Olivetti chip, OLIMCU16. Now, I know this is a proprietary power connector, but I'm gonna make the assumption that Olivetti, when they designed this, just took the AT standard and changed it around to suit themselves. So one thing that's missing here, or that I cannot identify here, from that AT standard is par good. I'm going to make the assumption that this pin is par good. So I have this spur light on 200 watt AT power supply. It has everything we need here, and this one is par good. The only problem is these do not fit over this and inside here they're just single sided spade connectors so it's not like I can just take those out and push them over these pins to suit but I also have a spur ATX supply and these connectors in here will quite happily push down over those pins. So I'm going to wrestle out everything we need that we can connect it onto this. And par good is still here. It's gray on the ATX. Honestly, I don't know if this is going to work, but sure, if something explodes, won't it make the video all that more interesting? So I have removed the 10 wires we need out of this connector. So we've connected our two five volts, our four grounds. Next one is plus 12, which is yellow. Then the minus 12, which is blue, I think. And then white, which is minus five. And our par good signal. Some of them are very close to each other and I don't want anything shorting out. In particular, just the plus and minus 12. Then get a wee bit of PVC tape between them. Right, to start an ATX power supply, without a computer to switch it. All you have to do is jumper the green to ground. So I'm just gonna stick this wire in here. Genuinely, I have no idea. But there's only one way to find out really, isn't there?
Well, nothing exploded yet. And we actually got a tone out of the system. I genuinely expected something to blow up. Okay, let's uh, connect up to the monitor and see if there's any display. So this is actually a 14 pin D sub here on the VGA. Pin nine is blanked off. And the only 14 pin cables I had are those that go with my KVM switch. So I've just hooked up one of them. And I thought we may as well hook up the keyboard and mouse as well. I don't know which way around these are meant to go. We'll try it like this. And then if it doesn't work, we can always swap them over. I've been able to space these out a wee bit better. So no need for our little bit of red tape now. Nothing should be shorted there. So monitor on. Are we going to get a signal? Timer sync error, unrecoverable power up error. So it seems that error that popped up there is maybe something to do with how we have jury rigged the power supply here. That power supply might not be just suitable for this board. In particular, I think this uh, power good signal is what's throwing things. So when we initially powered up, we're getting that single beep and it's giving us that error. But if we power cycle quickly, we got a more positive beep there. And the system boots. Unbelievable. So our little 286 Olivetti board that was thought to be faulty unknown working condition actually seems to work fine so i've been trying to get this board to boot from a floppy actually using this old olivetti software library ms 3.3 dos disk which i've tested in my pentium 2 rig and does work fine but i can't get much to happen You also noticed I've added a hard drive down here. That's not connected to the board. That's just connected to the power supply to give a wee bit of load there. Because with that there, with the floppy drive connected, when we power on now, we still get the dull beeps, but it does boot. That's floppy seek though. That doesn't sound right to me. We still do our quick flick of the power. That sounds right. And if we set the floppy drive to 1.4 megabytes, 1.44, and hit escape, she still doesn't boot. And just get that non system disk or disk error. Even just do a soft reset. Still no booting. If you notice though, the system seems to be booting in a 40 column mode, but here it very clearly says 80. That would be 40 column mode. That is 80 columns. And you'll notice that it's also immediately forgotten our 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. So I think the lack of battery on this board is screwing things up for us. Now I did order a brand new battery five days ago, but it hasn't arrived. So what I'm gonna do instead while I wait for the new battery to arrive. It's here where the old battery was. I'm gonna take these wee pin headers. And we'll just make off one there and one there. That side is positive and those two pin positions are joined anyway, so we only need one. 
And then we can use this wee battery pack from our HM Systems 286 build to hopefully retain some settings on this board. So I have our little battery hooked up here now and I've been having a bit of a play with this machine but unfortunately we're not getting anywhere fast. So with the battery connected when you first power it up now you do get that nice positive beep. But it's still not reading that disc. If we go into the extended setup on this machine, which you get to by pressing Shift, Control, Alt, Delete, you can see there that it does remember the time and the date now. It's still booting in 40 column mode though. If I just change that to 80 columns, I know it said 80 columns, but let's just change that anyway. And the floppy drive, let's just change that and confirm. Well, we're now booting in 80 column mode, that's good. But it will not read that disc. Well, it's got me stumped. I really cannot figure out why it will not read any discs I try. All of discs are good, I've tested them in other machines. And that floppy drive is definitely good. I checked it again in my Pentium 2 rig, it's fine. So does anyone have any ideas why I cannot get this little board to read off the disc? One thing that would be really great to find is a user manual for this board. So as I said, it's an Olivetti M203 motherboard, which is out of an M290S computer. I've had a quick look on Google and I can't find anything specific to that machine on this board. I can find other Olivetti M290 machines but they seem to have a different motherboard in them. So if anyone can help me find the manual it would be greatly appreciated. The thing is there's loads of jumpers about the board and there's nothing to say the previous owner didn't borrow a couple of the little jumpers off this or even possibly these have been put on here in the wrong place. Right, I think that'll do us for this video. We didn't quite get there, did we? We didn't get this machine to boot something, but at least we did get it powered up and I think it's working. I'm fairly convinced that it's just something stupid going on here with the floppy drive. I suppose the floppy controller could be dead, but I'm not convinced. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up as it does help the channel. Why not consider subscribing so you don't miss the next part. Feel free to check out any of my other videos. And I'll see you next time.